we share graduating from the School of Hard Knocks, making not the best decisions as young people, right. myself being a teenage father at the age of 16, but utilizing uh, that setback a as a come up, having a sense of motivation that we had to find passion and purpose in a pathway that was beyond our individual selves. Mm -hmm. For me, I made no apologies that uh, becoming a teenage parent was the catalyst for my life uh, turnaround. Uh, absolutely. I grew up in a single uh, parent household when my parents divorced. I'm the youngest of six. My brothers went to prison. I went to college. And again, it was the catalyst knowing that education was going to be the pathway for me to find uh, my voice and again, a platform for, for my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I was an educational purist. I went to college to major in education. Uh, but again, we plan, but God laughs. So right. you had a plan to go into that particular profession but God had another plan for your life, and that plan has really been tremendously uh, powerful, not only to you as an individual, but what I've been able to see, it's been powerfully impactful to the students at Carroll City, to the, to the residents and community members of Miami Gardens, and again, I'm sure to your family and, and those who, who you support and care about and love. So we, we share that graduation status yeah. and everything else I, I won't hold against you. Uh, let, let's talk about <laughs> how you transitioned uh, out, out of that pathway toward what you studied to what you eventually got into. Talk, talk, to, talk to me about that because our young people are going to have to figure things out. They have right. a plan, which we want all of our students to have a plan, full stop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We want them to have a plan for their lives, but they have to be willing to pivot and be able to tap into their passion and their purpose. And that is something that you seem to have done very well and found profit mm -hmm. in it as well. Talk, talk so to us I, about that. I want to that. move back for a second because mm -hmm. I am the last child of four. Uh, my sister above me and I are nine years apart. So you realize um, I was the last of the Mohicans, I would call it. And I was also kind of sort of the black sheep of my family. Uh, my siblings had not had any track record of getting in trouble. Uh, we grew up in Carroll City. They were m and uh, They had m and transferred to North Miami Beach. And as life went, everybody was fine until Claudia Ann was <laughs> birthed. And, you know, I'd say this to say, well, I'll start here. I always knew that I would be successful, even in the triumphs of times because I wasn't making the right decisions. I was always a leader, just leading the people in the wrong direction. So I knew, and I'll say this, I had a teacher in the seventh grade. Uh, her name was Tina Howell and she took me in and that's when my life changed. That was when I started to learn about finances. That was when I started to learn about life, like the life beyond what I could even imagine it to be. And I remember going to college and reading a book that talked a little bit about real estate. It was rich dad, poor dad at the time. And when I graduated and got into the workspace, I again knew that I would be successful. I, I almost knew that it was just only a short bit of time that I would be there. I was not making, ex I was still, I was still broke. So you had a job. I had a job. See, as long as we've known you, I never, I, I never envisioned you as having a job. You showed up to somebody's job. Every day. Okay, you had a job. Never was late. Okay, you had a stayed job. Stayed late. Okay. Was the number one on the charts. So I knew I would be successful. I was successful in that job. Okay. But I knew it wasn't going to be the end for me. I just didn't know what it was going to be that was going to take me to the next level. Well, that same mentor ended up moving back to Florida and buying a house. And so now I'm exposed to a real estate transaction. And I looked at the pay. They called it the HUD statement back then. Now it's called the closing disclosure. And I remembered her making $40,000 in about two months. From the time we saw that house to closing was two months. And I said, well, Claudia, you know how to add and subtract. If something's not adding up here. Because it took me a whole year to make $40,000. Two days later, I quit my job and I don't promote this and I don't recommend this. I had no job etiquette to, you know, give two weeks notice. I didn't know those things. And so I just took off. I didn't even know how to get my real estate license, but I knew I knew how to learn. I knew how to uh, be focused, committed. I knew those things. 
I mean, it just took me a week to get my real estate license, and that's where it transitioned for me. Um, I got my license. I became the rookie of the year in my company. We had about 3,500 agents at the time, and the rest was history. I remember making my first paycheck, uh, maybe not my first, but maybe my third paycheck, and starting to invest. And so literally, the time that I became a realtor is the same time I began to invest in real estate. And although I didn't have a plan, I didn't know really how, I knew that at some point in my life, I wasn't going to be working, you know, whether it be for commissions in real estate or at someone's job or whatever the case may be, I wanted to create some passive income. And so right around the age of 21, 22, things started to change financially for me. I've been on the vibe, kind of hard to describe. I'm in between, I'm good and it's fine, but I'm tired of the grind. Then I come alive in the night to realize I'm in the middle of